Israel, and uh, this is the return of the Israelite Wave to Sunday nights, and uh, I've been going back and forth Monday, Sunday, and uh, I've been uh, in a little hiatus. The schedule had got a little busy, and uh, you know things like that happen. But now we're back here on Sunday night, and uh, we'll probably do a little something on Mondays too, if y'all permit it. And um, so you know, you know, those of you all that have been listening to this show over the years, the, the, the that's what the Israelite Way show is about, is to show the way of the Israelite. And so uh, we talk about many different topics here, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be setting up some real good stuff for this show uh, through the summer months, y'all willing. Uh, well, we're going to be having interviews and, um, you know, talking to some people who have some uh, information that we can use, news we can use, and, you know, so we can get that information, we can get the news, we can get what's going on. And so, you know, we're going to have big plans for this show coming up in the uh, coming weeks, months, and all that good stuff as y'all permit. Um Sorry for the little delay tonight. I'm having technical problems. Uh, you know, my computers want to act up now that I need to come on this show. Now they want to act up. Other than that, I'm, I'm smooth selling throughout the day. I can do whatever on here. But now that I'm doing the show, having a little problems, and that gets frustrating. You know, it really frustrates me that they will act up at the moment that I need to, um, you know, need them to be running fresh so I can uh, get this show done. But I'm, I'm setting up things here and. Uh, by the next show, I'll be that much better, that much prepared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, um, man, since we've last sat here and, and, and conversated, there has been so much stuff going on in the world. Um, I believe that, man, before we, I mean, the last show before I took the hiatus, I think um, we may, uh, I think in our Shabbat class, we were just starting the man, not, yeah, the man of sin lesson, I believe. And that was months ago. Um, we've completed the Man of Sin series, and we completed the Revelation series. And, uh, you know, so now we're going to have the summation of that next week to just sum up all these things that we've been studying in the book of Revelation and just, you know, the things that they are uh, doing and, 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 and the things that have been done. See, when you go into the book of Revelation, and then one of the things that Yah told us at the ending, as we read um, last week, is that, you know, you'd be cursed for taking away, and you'd be cursed for adding to that book. And so when you go through there, uh, it doesn't take 20 hours per chapter, you know, to explain per chapter. Here you go breaking down every word and all that. Some of the stuff is self-explanatory. It's right out there in, in, you know, in the forefront in your face. That's why Revelation is at the back, back of the book. Before you get to Revelation, you should have, have, a, have an understanding of the middle, the front, of the book. You just can't come as a Christian to uh, come to the New Testament so, so-called so and then expect to understand the book of Revelation when you have no understanding or comprehension of what they call the Old Testament. So Revelation is the last book there because by the time you get there, you should have a foundational, more than a foundational understanding of the other books that preceded the book of Revelation. Right? So it doesn't take, if you're there by that time, it doesn't take for you to have a long, drawn-out thing going on there, you know. So we went through the book of Revelation, and I say what the entire, it's about, we got 12 actual parts, but some parts got like, you know, a half part to it, a, a point, point 0.5. So I think we have about maybe 14, 15 actual parts there, and I would sum it up to about the entire, um, the entire, Lesson series, I would sum it up to about maybe 20 hours, the entire series. I'm not talking about, you know, 20 hours per chapter. No, just the entire series may be summed up in a, in, um, a uh, 20-hour lesson. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to put that in a uh, on the new website. Everything will be there for you. You can go there and download it. You can listen to it. You can study over it. And uh, so when you look at these things and how the world is adding up and these prophecies, you know, are, are, are we starting to see, see them starting to shape up. And it's like the world is becoming a very scary place. Uh, not scary as in having fear, oh, I'm going to die, oh, no, 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 no. I'm saying scary as in that the way everything is shaping up and what they are about to do is going to be horrific. 
Now, I want to take a look at something here, and let us try to get a little understanding of it. That's the situation of North Korea. North Korea um, leader Kim Jong-il died, I believe, in 2011, and his son, uh, his son was anointed the next leader of, um, of North Korea. Now, remember, Korea is not a democracy. Um, they don't vote leaders in. The leaders are selected as they are here in the United States, but Korea just put it out in front where the United States hide it. And so uh, Kim Jong-un is the next leader, uh, the son of Kim Jong-il. Now, this leader, as he stood up and he stands into office, a lot of people believe that he's just chucking and jiving, that he's trying to make himself look tough. But he's, he's doing more than just that. He's doing more than just making himself look tough. Now, you can talk tough. And you can say, we got nuclear weapons and we can aim them towards your nation. That's tough talk. That's trying to make yourself look tough. But when you say, we got weapons and we can aim them towards your nation, and you start to aim those weapons towards his nation and start to break off communication, diplomatic, all the diplomatic routes where people can come and talk to you and try to talk you out of what you're talking about doing, we're in a different, we're in a different frame here now. This isn't just him talking tough, he's moving on his talk, he's backing up what he's saying. And so now the political pundits or the war experts as they are called, these, these people have so many wars that they have war experts. People that are experts about war. <laughs> so the war experts are saying, well now it looks like we're going to have a little small scale war, right? That was last week. Now this week they're saying, well, it looks like we're going to have a little more, a larger war on the hands with North Korea. This is what the United States have been trying to avoid because the Koreans are not in chumps. Now there was a war that took place between Korea. That's why we got North and South Korea today. And this war took place in the 1950s. In fact, right after the Second World War, the United States went into this Korean War. Now China who backed up North Korea said to the United States, stop meddling in their affairs. This is what China is saying. Now, I was reading an article where they were saying that China said one thing, China said another thing. So you can't really trust the news media in the United States because it's all propaganda. But China was saying in one breath, they were saying, hey, North Korea, you know, back down. Then in the next breath, they were saying, United States, stop meddling in their business. And so they're saying, because the U.S. has sent um, uh, uh, war planes, they have sent, I think, warships over into uh, South Korea, because the U.S. backed South Korea, that's one of their allies, and they have said that the U.S. now is running military exercises with South Korea. So the United States over there is showing B-2 bombers. B-2 bombers are nuclear bombers. These are the stealth fighters, you know, those that look like the uh, UFOs and all that stuff. It is based off the model of a UFO, absolutely. The black ones that can go under the radar and be, not be detected, those are the ones that carry nuclear bombs. And they sent two over there to fly in these maneuvers uh, with the South Korean military. So they're showing force. They're showing Kim Jong Un that hey, we, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not, you know, we're not just gonna let you talk your tough talk that we hear. So family, this is what we, we're looking at. That third world war can jump off. That's what's so shaky about this whole situation here, is that North Korea can get something started. It can help get something started right here, right now. And so China, trying to calm the young brat down, as they as they as they call him, you know, you don't even need China. This is Dennis Rodman back over there, right? It wasn't that strange. And I'm still tripping about that because I read an article yesterday that said that when Jay-Z and Beyonce went over to Cuba, Cuba, or Cuba, as it's actually called, it's not Cuba, that's the American accents, right? It's Cuba, just like it's not Iraq, it's Iraq. So, um, the um, Homeland Department, Homeland Security, wants to speak with them. J 
Jay-Z and Beyonce about why were they over there in Cuba. They want to question them on their trip to Cuba. Because Cuba is, you know, one of these so-called enemy states and all blah, 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 blah. Uh, but they didn't do that with Dennis Rodman. <laughs> Dennis Rodman went over to one of your known enemy states, one that the man is talking about sending nuclear bombs over to your country and blowing it off the map. But there was nothing about that, them questioning Dennis Rodman in the news when he got back. It was everybody made a joke. They even had him on Saturday Night Live last night, and they had a sketch on there where uh, they were making fun of Kim Jong-un, and um, they had Dennis Rodman there. So they're making fun, you know, the late night hosts on the, on the talk shows making fun of But it's like, isn't that situation a little more serious? So if your man Dennis Rodman has a free reign to walk across the earth, who is this man really? What was his mission to Korea? What did he do over there? Was he sent over there to spy? Did he sabotage his nuclear weapons? You know? Like the wild Gentiles doing all your wild movies? Right? One wild Gentile go over there and blow up their North Korea whole whole weaponry, right? With a stick of dynamite. Is that what you sent Dennis to do? Because if you sent the, you know, the wild Gentile over there, Kim Jong Un would have would have saw your plot and saw your plan, right? And and, and hung that wild gentile in the square. You can't send Jack Bauer over there because Jack Bauer is well known, right? But if you send Dennis Rodman over there, right? Maybe he can do the job. Maybe he can stick in. He's just a stupid, stupid brute basketball player, right? Who seen can't 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 even, you know, finish a full sentence in English, right? So you send him over there. Let him do his thing, right? But yeah. But there's a lot, as we see this Korean thing going on, keep your eyes on it. Don't, don't listen to the news where they say, well, this is, just, this is just talk. This ain't just talk. This man is moving weapons into the area where they can strike the U.S. military interests down in South Korea. Why is North Korea coming at the United States so hard? Why are these so-called Arab lands coming at the United States so hard? Everybody recognize, everybody around the world recognize the satanic ways of this whore, the United States, except the children of Israel and the wild Gentile that inhabited this land. We're the only ones that don't see it, but the whole world does, and the whole world wants to take her out of here. In this new movie that just came out, Olympus Fallen, it was about the White House being taken over by a contingency of North and South Korean rebels, if you want to call them that, commandos, because they want their country unified again. They don't, they're, they're, they're tired of civil wars between the North and South, and they're both the same people. And the United States is always there to instigate this war. This is why China has said to the United States, back out, stop meddling. Get out of South Korea, stop meddling. See, China has the power to tell that to the United States because China is just as powerful, even more so. So, we're in for some very interesting times in these next few months, probably before this year ends. We are some very interesting times. Before this year ends, we could be at a major war. Major. That includes several nations, powerful nations with powerful weapons. We may see a lot happen. Who knows? They just may try to sneak in there and tear down Olympus, aka the White House. So, fam, we're gonna freestyle here tonight. Anything you want to talk about? Give me a call. I know y'all be blowing my phone up all through the week. You got a question about this? Question about that? Sending me thirty thousand emails in an hour. Now we're on the radio show. Call in. The number to reach us is three four seven six three three nine six zero six. That's three four seven six three three nine six zero six. Call me. Let's talk. If you if you're already on the line and you would like to talk, just press the number one button on your key and raise your hand. Raise your hand, your H-A-N, your hand. You know that's how we talk. All right, so what I'm going to do before I go to the other line, I'm going to go ahead and take a, um, take a quick break here, still get myself situated. You know, I really <clears throat> have got to get my time to write on these shows. But it's like no matter how many, if, I, if I'm preparing for the show two hours before I start at the last minute, there's still something 
to go wrong at the last moment. It's crazy. That always happens. But anyway, let me just finish getting myself situated. I'm going to play uh, a, a, a tune or two, then I'm going to come back to the phone lines. And uh, we'll just go with tonight's open, open, open mic show. And uh, I'm going to try to give you a little lineup of some of the stuff that we're going to be bringing up uh, in some of the future shows. And you definitely going to want to stick around. And remember, this is the Israel Lightway Show coming to you 8 p.m. Central Standard Time every Sunday night. 8 p.m. Central Standard Sunday night. I mean, Central Standard Time every Sunday night. Set your clocks to it. All right. Be right back. You're listening to the Israelite Heritage Radio Network, where we restore the forgotten heritage to the forgotten people. All right, so on, brothers and sisters, we're back, we're back, we're back, and we're continuing tonight's show, tonight's topic. It's just open topics, and we're just doing like a um, welcome back show here. And, uh, we, you know, we got an um, uh, abbreviated show tonight, only 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 going for an hour, and we've got 30 minutes left. So uh, we're going to go to the phone lines in just a moment, but I, I, it just popped to mind, I, I forgot, you know, since the last time that we spoke, um, you know, they have elected a new pope, uh, Pope Francis the Humble, as they have called him, and... Uh, in our Revelation series, you know, we're looking at this man as being possibly that false prophet that Scripture said would come and run side by side with the man of sin, and and, and the two of them will, will lead the world astray, you know, lead them away from Yah, and lead them right into the arms of Satan. So uh, we're looking at this man, and we're looking at his character, and he seems to be adding up to being possibly that man of sin. And uh, so, you know, we can go more into that in a future lesson, or you can go you know, and, and, and get the Revelation series and uh, check that out and, you know, and, and see some of the stuff that we um, that we presented concerning this man and who he really is. And uh, I'm in the process of, of, of working on a video lesson I'm dealing with that so you can visually see these things and uh, put it all together for you. All right, let's get some phone lines here. And uh, once again, the number to reach his family is 347-633-9606. That's 347-633-9606. Zero six, the Israelite Way Radio Show, hosted through BlogTalkRadio.com, but brought to you by Israelite Heritage Radio Network. Let's go to the first caller here. We're looking at uh, area code nine five four eight five six. Shalom, shalom. You on the show? Are you there? Nine five four eight five six. Okay, that's not. All right, let's go to the next caller here. Maybe they, they stepped away for a moment. Uh, maybe there's some uh, a big uh, uh, news flash coming on CNN, and they have to run to CNN and check it out so they can come back and bring me some of that news. All right, area code 419320. Oh, I'm sorry. That was yeah. Shalom, Shalom, Hey, how you doing? This is Aki Elijah. Hey, 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 Shalom, Mike. How you be, man? I'm good, man. How you been? I- Hey, I cannot complain. I better not. I better not. Dang, dang. Hey, um, I want to uh, just comment on uh, what you were speaking on about, uh, you know, North Korea. Um, I think uh, that that the U.S. is uh, like it, this is why I think it, it's something more than what they're letting out to be, because mm-hmm. this guy, is, um, this guy in his in his dad, you know was uh, talking all this stuff before, but, you know, not one time did we hear, you know, um, that the U.S. is, you know, uh, ships in the, in, in the area near them or putting planes in the area near them or even having troops go over there. You know what I'm saying? And then now this man is, um, is talking this stuff. Now all of a sudden, you know, we have troops going over there and people are talking about it. So I, I think the guy might be able to, you know, be a bit more serious than what they letting on. And another thing, too, is I noticed um, that, you know, they start talking about, this, you know, they're talking about this stuff real heavy. It might be just um, a distraction for these uh, gun legislation, too, now that I think about it. Because uh, all of a sudden, you know, you hear, you know, you go from hearing about, you know, these gun laws that they're trying to put into effect. Mm-hmm. And then uh, next thing you know, you're not hearing about them anymore. You're just hearing about, you know, North Korea and, um, um, the few things that's going on in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And, 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 and when these type of stories come out, Ark, and when these type of things take place in the world, uh, more than likely they, they, they're going to serve dual purpose. They're going to be a distraction. And then there's something else underneath that they really ain't telling you about because just like some of the, you know, they got 30,000 troops in South Korea. They got 100,000 troops that they already have in Hawaii. 
And so these areas, and then they got some troops in Japan, so all of this is surrounding, you know, North Korea, so they're pretty much ready to strike. They're sending their planes over there, their warships. This ain't just no, you know, man just going off at the mouth, but it's going to be serving as a distraction, and you're absolutely right about the gun laws. Now, the last that I've heard of that gun law that was going through, um, that was put on the table of Congress was that um, they went on it and, and, and said, okay, we're not going to try to ban assault weapons, but we're just going to make it where, you know, crazy person can't get to them. If you got any type of mental illness, this is what they're saying, if you got any type of mental illness that you have to have a long background check and you can't, you know, buy a gun, blah, blah, blah. So that's what they're saying now. But I want you to pay attention to what's, what's everything that's circling around here. Here they had gun rights laws. I don't know if y'all paid attention to the news today, but now they're talking about uh, they are bringing up uh, the 70th year anniversary of the uprising in the Warsaw Ghetto that the Jews had this uprising against the Nazis in the Second World War because it took place in Poland. And so now it's all over the news. It's been 70 years since the uh, since the uprising, and so the Jews are over there celebrating and stuff like that. But you got to remember that when Hitler came to power, one of the things he did was take the guns from the people so that there wouldn't be anything like this in the uprising. And that's the same thing here is that they want to take the guns from the people before they come in and do what they got to do. Homeland Security just brought, uh, 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 what was it, like uh, 400 million bullets or some hollow point bullets, and, you know, they're buying all these bullets every department of the government because they're ready for these things to go down. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I think they're at like uh, over two billion rounds right now that they purchased, and then on top of that, uh, two, I think it's like uh, about twenty seven hundred armored vehicles. Yeah. Okay. So that okay. that's that's what he at right there, and uh, it's funny, um, because I I know I I, uh, I was speaking to Moshe too, and I was telling him about this as well as uh, how they uh they they just you know they passed these laws where. You know, they say it's okay to do drone, uh, aerial drone strikes in the U.S., you know what I mean, with these uh, unmanned uh, vehicles. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on top of that, you know, um, we have an ammo shortage, you know, because the Department of Homeland Security is buying up all ammo. And mm -hmm. then, and then, you know, uh, they're trying to take the guns, you know, from, from the people at the same time, and, and people not see that all these things that they're pushing forward is connected, you know. It's connected. It seems like it's not connected, but it's connected. Thanks, you know. Thanks, absolutely. And 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 that is another thing. They they only they only briefly talk about the ammo shortage, but there absolutely is an ammo shortage because the government is buying the ammo from the market, the same market that the consumers are buying ammo from. The government is buying. Now you would think that the government would have their own special contract where they buy all the ammo from. But they're picking it up off the shelf, and so that is causing an ammo shortage, literally. And then you got Dang. the Gentiles. They're going to, you know, Gentiles going to get theirs. You know, we get the leftovers, but they're going to get theirs. Shortage or not, they're going to be in them stores buying up the ammo, you know, just regardless of what's being said and, 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 and what's being done. So they're going to get theirs. Dang. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, uh, to all those out there that's, uh, that's gun owners, um, if you get to Walmart as early as possible, then, uh, yeah, 7 o'clock is when they start selling ammo. So mm -hmm. if y'all can get there, um, you know, early in the morning, y'all should be able to find, a, you know, a box or two, if anything. Okay. There you go. And I guess another thing, too, is that when you get your weaponry now, when you get the shortage of ammo, get something that's quite common, that's something that, that you know, you can buy the ammo from anywhere. You know, like you say, Walmart, you know, if you go get something that's, you know, the ammo is kind of hard to find, man, you know. <laughs> you know, you might have time, you know, just a little problem getting it. But if you got something common, you know, your 9 millimeter, your 40, whatever it is, that's, the bullets are out there, then, you know, definitely you want to hit that. But it's funny because the, the, um, the gun ban has been lifted in Chicago, the handgun ban, and... Uh, the, uh, they now got to get, they got to put a law together for concealed carry in Chicago, but Walmart still don't sell guns and Walmart still don't sell bullets here. So it's like, you know, that's only, that's mainly a southern thing. I mean, come up to much, many of these northern Walmarts, they don't, they don't sell bullets and stuff like that. But when I was down in Louisiana, you know, I, I got me a few boxes and, you know, hey, that'd be that. Right, Kane. 
Hey, um, but another thing too, um, to all that's uh, looking to um to purchase their first uh their first firearm, um, I'm, I'm under any other circumstances I wouldn't recommend this, but I mean I would go ahead and uh, get a shotgun first, and mm-hmm. that's mainly and the only reason why is because um. So far, you know, me uh, living in uh, in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and then moving back uh, here to uh, Toledo, Ohio, um, mm-hmm. I can tell you that's the one ammo that you can always find is shotgun ammo. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, I mean, you know, just, just so you can be able to, you know, you have a, a, a defensive weapon and then have enough food to feed that weapon. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hey, hey, I see your point, man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Toda, 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 for calling in, I can't. Okay, Toda, for bringing the show back up. Hey. Much needed. Hey, absolutely, I, absolutely. So, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, I keep so long. Yeah, the Yankees dead on point there. The government even said it. The government even said, get your shotgun. <laughs> the government talks about that. So, yeah, there's a lot of shotgun ammo out there. So, uh, definitely, you know, get your... Uh, 20 gauge, 12 gauge, sawed off, whatever, you know, just get your shot down. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to go here to 773. I know this area code right here. This is from Chicago. Chicago. All right, 773562. Long time. Long time. Long time. Long time. I don't know. Sound like something going on in that background. Maybe a talent show or something, huh? All right, let's go hit to nine five four three seven eight. Nine five four three seven eight. Sound like somebody's singing there. So I'm so I'm here on the show. Nine five four three seven eight. Hey, can you hear me? So yeah, long. Hey, can you hear me? There you go. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Hallelujah. Yeah, that was me to call before, but we was having some phone difficulties. I don't know what was going on. You know, the, you know, the devil's always busy. You know. Man, he is, uh, boy. He is. <laughs> And listen, man, hey, it's great to hear you back on the, back on the radio. Um, I love the things you do. You know, um, by the way, this is this is uh, Aki Yara Yara, 1038. But, um, yeah, man, you know, um, I'm paying attention to the news, and I'm looking at all this stuff, and I'm thinking, like, man, and this is real-time prophecy, you know? And um, just like I always say, you know, I remember my grandma telling me back when I was little, you know, we live in the last days, and that was, you know, I just had a birthday, so I'm 31 now, so that was back when I was, like, you know, four or five years old. I remember that clearly. And... Mm-hmm. I see exactly what she was talking about, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking about the man of sin. I'm thinking about, you know, the false prophet. I'm looking at his offices. I'm thinking to myself, man, and this dude, you know, ben, uh, not Benedict, uh, Francis, you know, he really is, you know, he's got that, he's got that, that, that tongue of a dragon, man. He's saying a lot of things that people are really, you know, they're, they're, they're happy to hear and they think it's so nice and humble and great, but you always got to look at the in between, what's behind all that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, I remember watching a movie years ago, uh, you've probably seen it, you know, came out not so long ago, or it was a few years ago called uh, The Inside Man, um, with, you know, Jody Foster and all them in it. And, and the, the main group in the movie, you know, he had he had a lot of money in the bank that he, he, didn't, want them to, he didn't want them to steal it. And, and at the end of the whole thing, you find out he was a Jew. And the reason why he had so much money on the bank was because back in the day, back when the so-called, you know, Holocaust song that was going on, he helped the enemy and he got paid off for it. So he was always giving charity, giving charity, giving charity, and people thought he was some great dude. But he had a lot of guilt, and he was trying to, like, you know, in a way, buy his own, you know, his own redemption back by trying to give so much and everything. And that, but I remember seeing that years ago, and that clicked. I'm like, man, you know, that's, that's what I think about when it, when a lot of these people out here always giving and always talking this and saying that and doing this. There's a reason behind all that. It's not just, you know, it's not always purely altruistic. You know, something, it's something behind that. You know, mm-hmm. and the same thing to do right here, man. It's like it's definitely real time prophecy, and I'm thinking like, you know, Obama has definitely shown a lot of the, um, you know, attributes of um, being a possible man of sin. And I'm thinking like, you know, other than him standing up in the temple once they get done building that, because they are building the temple right now as we speak in the land, you know. So, what else? What else besides him, you know, doing that when that finally, hope, when that whole thing finally happens, um, would clue us into him, you know, uh, knowing and recognizing him being a possible man of sin. Uh, say that, say that, say that last one again, huh? Um, you know, like Obama's definitely, you know, he fits a lot of attributes of being, you know, the man of ten. You know, a lot of those things tend to add up towards, you know, as far as those. So, like, other than him, you know, standing up in that in the temple, pretending to be the greatest of all, of all you know, until that happens. Um, what other things do we look at that would definitely, you know, give us an insight on, you know, what to look out for 
when the man of San Juan does pop up on the scene if Obama's not it. I truly believe if he's not it, I think he might be. But if he's not it, then definitely the next dude in there is going to be it. Okay. Hey, that's an excellent question, Ike. And, and Toda, Toda, Toda for calling in. I Toda for calling in. Hallelujah. That's an excellent question. And, um, man, it deserves an excellent answer, right? So some of the things that we can look for, the I mentioned, he said, listen, other than him standing up in the temple making himself the greatest of all gods, what else can we look up to that's going to lead up to that revealing of that man of sin? Well, when we look on certain things, let's look at what the Scripture says. It says first that that great falling away has to happen first. This is in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. It says that great falling away has to happen first. I think and then we go over to the book of um, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy. And Timothy, I think it's chapter 4, verse 1, he speaks about that in the last days many shall give <clears throat> ear to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons and all that, that many shall fall away from the faith, he said. So many shall fall away from the faith, and that great falling away is the same thing. That many falling away from the faith is the faith that believe in Yahushua as the Messiah. When we start to see these Israelites that are, that are proclaiming Yahushua, that are messianic, blah, 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 when they start to fall away, then we know, we know that we are close to that revealing of that man. Now, on the other hand, Yahushua spoke about, in Matthew chapter 24, wars, rumors of wars. He gave a whole listing. He said that we are in the times of sorrow. Then that persecution happens. And so we're looking at that persecution. We're looking at that uh, 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 just things escalating. The love of many wax cold in the earth. And one of the greater things out that we're looking for as the rising of the man of sin is a lawless society, a lawless world, a world that has no law of Yah and the, and, and the world that has no um, understanding of Yah's law, a world that do as thou will. I was given a video today, I was sent a uh, video today by one of the emails, and uh, it's a YouTube video where they were showing this woman, this anchor woman on MSN, which with her little four-year-old daughter, and pretty much got her four-year-old daughter talking about that it's okay for men to marry men and women to marry men, women. It's, it's, you know, this whole homosexual thing is, is starting to take shape, but we are looking for a full-scale lawless society, a society without Yah's law. Yah say keep the Shabbat. we got over two billion people that keep Sunday as their Shabbat, not the seven day of, of the uh, week as Shabbat. Yah said the seven day of the week. And so we're looking at all these things. Lawless society means a society without Yah's laws. Whatever Yah's laws say, they're going to do the direct opposite of it. So that's the society that we're looking for. So these are some of the major points. And looking at the temple, building of the temple, uh, that's going to be another major point. But before that has to happen, there has to be a war between the Jews and the Palestinians. And then as this war is negotiated, the man of sin is going to negotiate a peace between the two rival factions. And then they're going to build the temple in, in honor of that peace treaty. So those are some of the things I see that we're looking for. And like I say, Toda, man, I only got 12 minutes left here, and I got to fly through here. Um, let me go back up to the area code 773, see if they're ready to come on, because they got the hand raised here. 773-562. Okay, still got a lot going on in that background. Let's go to the area code um, 425-353. 425353. Now, real soon, I'm going to have my producer on the show that, you know, will 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 come to you and, you know, ask you your name and stuff, so I'll be able to see your name on here. But right now, I don't have the producer here, so I'm just going to have to call your area codes and the first three numbers of your phone number. So, area code um, 425353. Uh, shalom, shalom. You're on the show. Shalom, 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 Aki Obadiah. Hallelujah. Hey. Um, Hallelujah, indeed. What a blessing it is to have some fellowship on uh, on this first day. I tell you, uh, the most boring moment for me is after Shabbat and on the first day. So hallelujah for bringing this show back, Aki. And um, I want to make a comment, and then I want to ask your opinion concerning the uh, Korean um, situation. I don't know if I said my name. This is Yelaya, um calling from the uh, Seattle, Washington area. Hey. And and uh, what I wanted to, the comment I wanted to make was uh, concerning the B-2 bombers. Um, I can recall during Desert Storm uh, that they used over uh, 
pretty close to 400 airplanes uh, during that war. And um, if the B-2 bombers were in service at that time, two B-2 bombers could have done the work of uh, 400 airplanes. Mm. So when I see what they're doing now by sending the B-2 bombers plus the uh, the, the other stealth uh, airplane, the F-22, which I had a hand in building uh, both of them, I mean, they really, really plan to annihilate this nation. Now, my question is, um, what is it that you think that our nation is doing to North Korea to provoke them to um, 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 uh, come out and say we are ready to go to war that, that they probably not telling the public, you know, they tell the public what they want us to hear. But what do you think is probably really going on behind the scenes that 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 is really actually making them come out and, you know, saying we are ready to go to war and, uh, you know, just give your opinion the best you can concerning mm. that. And that's all I have. Okay, so Hallelujah. Now, so- and I got the computer. I got the computer. Hallelujah. Ah. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I've been meaning to tell you, and it just slipped my mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's yeah. good. So that means uh, uh, that's the first time I ever send a package off. So get ready, Aki, because I got a lot more coming your way. <laughs> all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. That's all, all right. I have. Okay, all right, hold on. That's an excellent question. All right, thank excellent you. Excellent question there. Um, and it's like, wow, what, is, what, are they, what are they doing to provoke this man to make him, because his father talked war against the United States, Kim Jong-il, and now he's moving more so than his father did. His father just talked for years, but this man is moving. He's moving his military. He's putting them towards the border. Um you know, he's, 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 he's moving weaponry. He's telling you where he's going to strike. He's, he's doing missile tests. He's doing all these things. He's about to open up a nuclear reactor. He's like, I don't want to hear anything y'all have to say anymore. What is provoking this man? That's, man, Elder, that's a powerful question. Right now, I haven't been able to find exactly what are they doing on the undercurrent to make him want to go to, to war like this. Now, I know, Elder, when I look at the scripture, and there's several scriptures that speak about Yah putting fish hooks into the jaws of the nations and bringing them to the great battle, the battle of Armageddon. Now, we know that as we look at the world stage right now, if the man of sin is in office, if the false prophet is in office, if this is happening now, we know that we are leading up to the battle of Armageddon shortly. So these nations got to be stirred up. Now, remember, when they formed this 10 king union that will rule the entire world. These ten kings are going to turn on the whore of Babylon and burn her with fire. This man, some of the things he's saying, I don't know if he know or not, but it's biblical. It is scriptural. He's talking about making the United States swim in a sea of fire. When I watched that movie, Olympus Has Fallen, the villain in that, this is what he said. He said, I read your Bible. And he said, doesn't it say in there that the wages of sin is death? And he said that we shall bring death and famine to your country. That's what Scripture says is going to happen to Babylon. Death and famine in one hour. So more so um, elder than probably what the United States is doing, because I know that they're doing something. But the spirit of Yah may be stirring up in this nation to kick this stuff Oh, remember, Scripture says Yah hardened the heart of Pharaoh so that Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go. Now, it didn't say that, you know, Yah made Pharaoh staunch about it. What it means was that Yah stirred it up in him. So he stirred it up in him because if Pharaoh did not want to let the people go, then Yah could not show his might and show his set of partners in the face of the children of Israel. So all of these things gathered and all of, the, all of these things collectively make sense. And it may be Yah stirring up because he's like, I'm not backing down. Uh uh-uh, I'm not backing down. So if something kick off with that, the whole world is going to be engulfed in this war. And the third world war has to happen before Armageddon, before Yahushua comes back. 
And then after Yahushua comes back, we know that thousand year reign, Satan locked up, and then the last war after Satan is released. So it may be Yah stirring him up because I, I, you know, his father was saying, you know, this and that and that and this, but he's saying the same thing, but he's like, I'm going to show you. I can show you better than I can tell you. And he won't back down. China trying to talk to him. He won't back down. Russia trying to talk to him. He won't back down. The U.S. can't even get a diplomat over there except Dennis Rodman, and he won't back down. Right? So... There's something, there's something heavy, 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 heavy taking place in the earth right now, family. Heavy Ruach is in the earth right now. Hallelujah. And we know that Ruach can go both ways. We got righteous Ruach, righteous spirit, and we got unclean Ruach, unclean spirits. All right, let's go to area code 253 279. 253 279. Shalom, shalom. You're on the show. Oh, shalom, shalom. Um, yep, thank you. Uh, this, I have, so I'm <laughs> this is Imam Moravia. Hey, How hey, you? hey. Hey, I can't God bless you. I, um, I have uh, wanted to make a, a, a comment about um, the new pope and Barack Obama. Okay, they both are in agreement with uh, accepting all religions or all people um, mm -hmm. under their, you know, w whatever it is that they're got, you know, they have going on. But also the fact that um, Barack Obama had sent a letter to the Pope, and this yes. letter was kept under secret. You know, the, the contents of this letter was not revealed to uh, the media or the public. Okay. And... Um, just, just making a note that you know how they're maybe both working together, and and that you mentioned that the man of sin and um, the new pope would be in cahoots together, so to speak. I'm using that word in cahoots, but working together. Um, so, so do you see that as as um, you know? I'm looking at it as part of. Uh, also, scripture revealing itself in, in those two. Mm -hmm. um, so, what, what do you think about that, if, if you could? That's deep, because that letter, and you're absolutely right, the letter that Obama sent to the Pope was delivered by the Vice President Joe Biden when Joe Biden went to go visit uh, the Pope when he was first elected. Now, in this age of technology, why in the world is Barack Obama sending a handwritten letter? When you got text messages, you got email, you even got faxes. You know, faxes is outdated now, but you got faxes. Why is he sending a letter to the Pope that nobody knows the contents of that letter? Right? There's a presidential seal and everything on it for the Pope to read, for the Pope's eyes. So they are already working in cahoots. It's like this. When you got the Pope that is so loved already, you got Barack Obama that's so loved around the world. And if the Pope was to say, I got a secret to tell the world, Barack Obama is God, right? And they already call Barack Obama a Messiah. They already call him a God. The people will believe because the scripture says that the man of sin is going to do miracles in the sight of men, lead them away through the miracles that he's able to prove. So if this man who was so loved by the world, the Pope, it, whatever he says, the people are going to listen to. So he's the head religious authority. He is the stand-in, according to his doctrine of his church, of Christ on earth. So he got the sole authority on earth as if he was the Messiah here. So if this man is to tell you, I'm the head religious figure of the world, and the God that I worship is Barack Obama. And he and Barack Obama start pulling miracles out and all this. They're the same. They, the Pope is going to call for gays to be married, just like Barack is. Everything you see Barack do, that Pope is going to be for the same thing. They already accept it. We are one people. The Pope has reached out to Muslims, to atheists, everybody. Barack Obama has Passover at the White House, and he uh, uh, celebrates Christmas. And, you know, he does all the Christian holidays. He does the Muslim stuff, and he does the Jew stuff. So he's highly accepting. So they are right side by side, neck to neck with one another. They're, they're, they're attached. They're the same. But well, we got another caller here, and we got uh, 20 seconds, and we're going to go maybe a minute or two into the archives. So 
720 480 Shalom, Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Aki Obadiah. This is Imam Aina. Hey, hey, Shalom, Shalom, Aina. How you doing? I can't complain. You know that. If I did, nobody would listen. So I'm just going to shut up about that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, it is so nice to have you back on the radio again. And I'm, I'm in agreement with Elder. It's like, you know, when you get down to the first day and the evening, it's like, okay, I, I need something else now. Come on, where's Obadiah? So here you are. Um, I, want to, I want to touch on um, China, North Korea, and the U.S. just a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. And I want, you know, to, to, for you to bring it on on what Yah is showing you. Now, mm-hmm. I'm, I saw this just last night. I'm saying China, of course, we know, is in military treaty with North Korea. China is, is trying to dissuade North Korea from, you know, really messing, messing up like they're trying to do. They're, they're getting ready to get something started. Okay. But if North Korea does what it says it wants to do against the U.S., China is an ally of the U.S. China has a lot of products and so forth, you know, trade agreements and stuff with the U.S. Okay. Is North Korea, you know, like you said, Yah is using who he chooses to use. Is he, could he be uh, hardening the heart of North Korea in order to lash out at two nations at once? You've got China mm-hmm. who still, you know, they weren't with North Korea. They weren't with Korea when the Korean War was going on. You know what I mean? And then you've got the U.S., that's in trade agreements with China. You got this triangle thing look like it's going on to me, and that's going to end up being a nation dividing itself because if China lashes out with the military treaty with North Korea, what's it doing to its trade agreements with the U.S.? Mm-hmm. That's deep. That's deep. All right. That's, that's, that, that's what I'm going to put out there, so you take us further. Okay, because you know that um, China owns a lot of land here, national monuments and things like that. They own a lot of property uh, in the United States. And so as China is building up and right now to become a superstructure in the world, as they call a superpower, but there's only, you know, one power, yeah. And, and so as they build up to become the superstructure in the world, they're doing it off the back of the United States. And so... They don't want to come to clash into that until they are at their full, until they stop weaning off the breath of the, you know, the breath of the beast. And so when they are able to stand on that fully on their own two feet and start to eat meat now, then they're going to come and then they want to attack the beast. But North Korea is moving. Now, what North Korea is doing is not what China don't want to do. China wants to come head to head. Russia wants to come head to head with the United States, both of them. But yet there's a time and place, but North Korea seems to be pushing that forward before the, before they think that it's time. And that's why I'm saying I, I can't see no other reason that North Korea is doing this other than they're being stirred up. And like you say, y'all hardening, hardening their hearts to have them to move forward in this fashion and at this time because we know everything is done in, in, in y'all's time. And so you're absolutely right about China and North Korea have a pact. If North Korea was to go to war with the South, with South Korea, the United States would have to help the South Korean because they have a treaty with them, and China would have to help North Korea because they got a treaty with them. And if China goes in, Russia has a treaty with China, and Russia would have to give assistance to this war. So if Russia and China and North Korea is going in, then you're going to have to have... Um, um, the Arab lands to come in. Now, here's a very interesting thing. Japan. Japan. After the Second World War, I don't know how they were able to accomplish this, um, the United States and her allies, but after the Second World War, there was a, 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 um, a treaty signed, and I think it was put into Japan's new constitution that they could not have any offensive attacks their army could only be for defense. Now, here you are, a sovereign nation, and here you are in the most violent time uh, on this planet in the history of man, and you cannot uh, go out on an offensive strike. You put this in your constitution. Man, that was crazy. Now Japan is saying, 
because of what China is doing and North Korea is doing, we need offense now. And so now they're aiming. They didn't even have their army trained for offensive maneuvers. They're over here right now in California. The Japanese army, many of them, and you know certain 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 branches of it, and they do a military maneuvers in California, being trained by the uh, U.S. Marines. You know the Marines over there training the Japanese uh, because they don't know any, like I say, any offensive maneuvers. So now they're saying China is on the rise, and China is our greatest threat over here. So now when you look at the situation, um, that is um, that everything is that enough. You look at that part of the world. You got North Korea. You got South Korea. You got Hawaii not that far. You got China. You got Japan. And so Japan is saying, okay, now we got to get some. We got to rewrite this constitution. Japan is about to rewrite this constitution to put in there that we can have uh, military offensive because they're like China has always been fighting with us for these little 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 bitty islands. China wants those little bitty islands because they want it for material. I mean, for military um, strategic uh, uh, placement, and so. Japan can only defend itself now. But now they're talking about we got to go and we got to get, because we may have to come into this war because uh, the Japanese are an ally of the United States. So they would have to come to the assistance of the United States in that region. And that's why the United States, when they went in there with the Second World War, you know, made this treaty and everything. So now they got military bases in Japan because it's strategic with Korea. It's strategic with China. And so now they can even operate from Japan, but now they got to wait till Japan put in their constitution, and now we can go on military strike. So all of this is very highly, 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 highly interesting, and in just what North Korea and uh, China is planning to do now. If North Korea sends one missile over the border into the south, that's going to be a state of war. North Korea said we are already in a state of war. We are already ready for war. So if they send a missile over there and strike first, we may be seeing a major war overnight. That's how that's how that's how unstable the situation is. Is that it won't take weeks and months, and it can be overnight. We can go to bed tonight, and we can wake up in the morning and turn on the news, and there's a full-scale war going on in the north and the south. And China's gonna send troops, and the United States is sending troops. They're taking the troops out of Afghanistan. All that madness. It can happen overnight. So yeah, we are in some very interesting times, family. And um, North Korea, all I can see is Yah stirring that nation up because I don't see no other reason for them to be this headstrong uh, to go to war. What nation loves to go to war like that other than the United States, right? And so North Korea is a small nation. They may have nuclear power, but they don't have as much as Russia and the United States and China and all these other superpowers, as they call them, superpowers or superstructures. But yet they're going in head first. We ready for war. We ready for war. Now, the thing about this is I, I, as I've been looking into this, I haven't heard the reason for war spoken out of North Korea's mouth. As the other was asking, you know, what is stirring them up? I haven't really heard the reason for I haven't heard them say, okay, we want to go down to the south, and we want to take over the south, and we want to bring the south and make it part of the north. Or we want to reunite Korea. I haven't heard that. It's just that I'm moving my weapons. I'm ready for war. I'm going to strike you. And we're going to, you know, send bombs over to California. We're going to send bombs over to Washington. And we're going to take your country down. So I say this, family. Keep your eyes open. Keep your hearts open. And uh, uh, keep your palms towards the heavens in prayer. Because we are in those times. We are in those days. We are in that hour. Where the prophet said that these things will happen. And that Yah said they must come to pass. And so as we look and as we see this happening it's starting to add up and um it's high time it's high time uh so much is just taking place and we're going to have a show talking about the stuff that's going on in space it's very fascinating what's going on out there especially with the major planets you know saturn and um saturn and uh jupiter saturn and, and, and jupiter so much going on with those two planets and so many so-called discoveries that they're making uh, on these planets, I know uh, we talked about this before, but you may, uh, if you remember, uh, we talked about the the uh, pentagram that is on top of Saturn. There's a there's a storm that is on top of the planet Saturn that is shaped in the form of a pentagram, six pointed star. Where do you think that comes from? Why do you think that's up there? They call it a storm, but that's something totally different. Ain't no storm. But uh, we're gonna have a show on that real soon as we try to 
keep our eyes open and uh, you know just 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 wait to hear what Yah has to say. And like I say, family, these are those times, and just stay prayed up that you're able to escape what's about to come. I see somebody in the chat room, some guy put up here, and he had some crazy website, and he's teaching that false doctrine that all these things that we're reading about in the book of Revelation happened over four centuries. You know, with the fall of Rome and the European, they see they always try to put themselves into everything. When they are nowhere to be seen, when they have nothing to do with nothing, they try to put themselves there. Yahushua is coming. And he's coming, he's not coming to save a church, a Christian church. He's coming to save the children of Israel, his people. And so when these things happen, Scripture said they must happen with speed. He's going to come speedily. This thing, these things are going to transpire over a three-and-a-half-year period. Can you imagine all that stuff we're reading about in Revelation and the hailstorms and the earthquakes and, you know, 70-pound hail coming, all of that in a three-and-a-half-year period? Right? Not over four centuries. Yeah, I don't give you a break like that. He brought the plagues in Egypt, a plague, 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 plague. He didn't let up. He didn't let up until Pharaoh said, I'm letting your people go. He's not going to let up until wickedness and, 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 and man says, you are Yah and you alone rules all the kingdoms of the, of the universe. Right? That's when he let up. But he's not going to let up. So you get four centuries. You know, none of us, none of us here, you know, was alive for four centuries ago. You know, we didn't feel none of that. If the seventy-pound hailstorms happened two hundred years ago, oh man, that's that. What I'm worried about this. I ain't got to read that chapter in Revelation because it already happened, right? No, it hasn't happened. It's going to happen in our day, in our time. So you can teach that if you want to, uh, Ed Yamin, whatever your name is. We don't do that here. We teach according to what the scripture says. So with that being said, family, hey, I'm out of here. We're in the archives, and uh, may y'all bless. Told out to everybody that called in. Told out for all your beautiful questions. We'll be back here next week. Uh, the Israelite Way radio show at um, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right. So that will be it, family. May y'all bless. Show them. If you think this message is important and should be viewed by others, please share it. Share it to Facebook, share it to Twitter. Also, be sure to like and favorite the video. By doing so, it will rise in listings and will have the opportunity to be viewed by others. Help us get the message out to the national and international stage. And also, please subscribe to this channel, The Truth is Full of Lies.